Honestly, milk. I love milk. Milk. I can't really do anything without milk. Milk, milk, milk. Moral of the story, milk makes you funny, okay? Drink milk. are ready for this this is a revelation that i recently discovered actually because i ran out of milk for my coffee obviously i can't drink coffee without milk i can't really do anything without milk closest thing i had to milk was the iconic protein milk they're just um extra filtered so that they have it's like a more concentrated milk so that there's just more milk protein in it which is pretty amazing because it tastes like plain chocolate milk i guess i would call it a chocolate protein mocha protein coffee a protein mocha protein coffee who doesn't want extra protein in their coffee this is a life hack right now put me on five minute crafts i don't know why you guys let me ramble on like this y'all ready for this coffee Mocha protein. Are you kidding me? Obviously, a little secret sauce. Stop it right now. Okay, hear me out. A mocha is usually full of trash and sugar. This is incredible. She's done it again. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how she does it. Well, you're welcome. Hola! Mi amigo. Yes? Amigos. Okay, so this video is basically just gonna be a giant get to know me story time. If you saw my poll on Instagram, these are some of the questions that you guys asked me. <laughs> this was really fun, actually. I like answering real questions instead of just like assuming what you want to know and then making a video about it. So this is cool. This is fun. Also, side note, I film everything on my iPhone, so I've literally written down like the questions here. <laughs> I have, and there's more than this, but a lot of them were like doubles. There were some really unique questions, but most of them were like kind of the same idea. So I've written down a generalized list, if you will. And some of the stuff is get to know me. Some of it's just general inquiries about fitness and snacks and milk but kick it off with favorite time to go to the gym okay honestly this is such a good question because i hate going to the gym in the afternoon i feel like i have zero energy the tasks that i have for the day are already flooding my brain and so i really can't focus i feel like the morning first thing like early early honestly seven o'clock is the best i usually don't make it there until like 7 30 but seven o'clock a.m is ideal time to work out i have 30 throughout the day Girl, right when I wake up. So, a great way to start the day is with a workout. Also, Loki, the gym is actually insane in the afternoon and the evening and any other time pretty much in the day. So busy, which is crazy. I don't know how that many people work out in the afternoon or after work, but good for them. But yeah, for those of you that do go to the gym in the evenings and afternoons and times where it's like extremely busy, I've built out a few mini split days that you can do on one piece of equipment for that reason alone because I know how frustrating frustrating it is to have no equipment and to have to wait for something honestly like kind of kills the mojo oh. and i just don't feel like working out anymore if i have to wait around you know you gotta like stay in the groove so yeah check that out on instagram if you haven't or if you go to the gym at a busy time okay let's since we're on gym stuff we'll keep doing gym stuff we'll like stay on the same page kind of thing um my favorite day of my split for the week so that's also in another video if you want to watch it my whole entire split, which I'm still currently on. This has not been changed. This is an updated split currently what I'm doing. And this is my like going into summertime split. So if that's your goal right now is to kind of build lean muscle mass, dial it in. This has more exercises per day. Usually I keep it lower if I'm trying to gain more weight. This has more exercises in the day. So I'm actually probably burning a little bit more. But my favorite day of my split is push day. Honestly, I don't know what it is. The satisfaction, I think maybe just my mind to muscle connection for my shoulder muscles just my delt actual like shoulder and my triceps i feel it so much so i feel like really gung-ho in control and i feel good after that workout like i feel like i'm never like missing a beat like i feel strong and i don't feel tired after which is nice i also don't sweat a lot <laughs> It's nice. It just be it just feels nice. You know what? If you know, you know. I bet you secretly every single girl's favorite workout day is shoulders, okay? I'm not making this up. Ask around. <laughs> Biggest aid in staying motivated. This is such a good question, and I get this one probably the most out of anything else. You're so dedicated to the gym. I'm not. I <laughs> yep. Something to tell you, I am not dedicated to the gym. I don't go to the gym 
to ever really reach specific goals and I don't stay motivated at all. I think the secret recipe to being consistent is just doing the thing even when you're actually not motivated at all. So to be able to like get yourself there and actually not think about it at all. I feel like people are always like waiting around for like the day that they'll be able to find something that will make them want to do the thing. But I don't know if that ever happens. And I think the secret to success, honestly, in any, not even just the gym, in any endeavor, anything that you take on is like very much based on being able to just actually get the things done even when you don't want to do them. So yeah, that one comes up a lot. People are like, how do you want, how do you, keep yourself interested and keep like wanting to go but I don't <laughs> I don't actually really want to go most of the time most of the time like there's an odd day where I'm excited or I'm doing something new or I have a new supplement or new shoes or whatever it is cute new shorts but this is so rare honestly it's regular days that I'm just going I'm just going just going to just I just get there and I go in and keeping stuff written down like having my split in my phone and I have like the little check boxes like ticked off beside everything that I'm doing once I complete it for the day I like take it off so that helps like being like okay we're just doing the things you know yeah I don't know how else to explain like how to get hyped I think it's almost like get unhyped think about it less just do it like think about the things less and just learn how to enjoy the time in general. Just always enjoy, always enjoying the time. The enjoyment is just in your head, not based on your environment or what you're doing. And a good playlist with noise canceling headphones, I think helps me a lot to stay out of my head and think less, get the thing done. But yeah, okay. Staying on the gym topics. Gym bag, do you have a gym bag? And what do you put in it? Okay, this is also a good question. I love watching YouTube videos and seeing other people like show me what they bring to the gym because I love like the idea of having the gym bag and I used to have a big fat gym bag that was just for the gym and like my bought my water bottle and like my sneakers and everything like stayed in there until I would scoop it up in the morning to go to the gym but I just like outgrew it like the most of the things that were in there I wasn't actually ever in need of and I just like was lugging around this bag to like carry my sneakers which got old and I have my one like single water bottle that I've had for like ages and ages it these bottles literally last forever and I just buy like a new lid if it gets like too old or it leaks and I just have this actual bottle forever. I don't use any other bottles, but I use that one every day anyway, so I'm not just gonna leave it in the gym bag. I just like outgrew the need for a gym bag, realizing that I just don't actually need that much stuff. I bring my little pouch with me everywhere. So this has like my headphones in it. I just have with me all the time. Headphone, water bottle, I just carry my sneakers. Guys, that's it. Honestly, gym bag, again, fun activity. Love the thought of it. Love seeing other people's gym bags and what they put in them. Yeah, I just don't do it. I just don't have, I even when I bring like my tripod to film and my mic, like I'm just wearing it already and I just wear my shorts under my sweatpants all day anyways. Yeah. I'm trying to streamline my life. Everything as simple as possible, very minimal, minimal effort, maximum efficiency. This is the key. Favorite workout sneakers. I've been waiting for this question for so long. I love the sneakers that I wear to the gym and it does not waver. I only ever wear one type of footwear in the gym. Honestly, upper body days, I usually wear no shoes. My gym's really clean, it's very nice. Vans. I'm not exaggerating when I say these are the most comfortable shoes for doing legs. I wouldn't recommend a wicked cardio day in slip on vans. But honestly, I mean, you could do legs with no shoes because you want the bottom of your feet to be flat on the ground, I think opinion. Okay, don't come for me with the lifting shoes, okay? I know, I understand. But these just fit nice, they're comfortable, they keep my feet completely flat. Fucking cute! I know! The fad with the Metcons, I understand. I've tried them. I don't hate them. They are convenient, they're sturdy, but just the way that they like sit on the ground, they're not completely flat. The bands, they have like this sharp like edge on all the way around the sole, so there's no like curve, like a running sneaker would have like a curve on the front and on the back here. And it it just like keeps my whole foot like completely flat against the ground. So instead of like my foot wobbling like this, she's secure. She is sturdy. And I can feel the ground better. Like I'm pushing through the ground in most of my leg exercises. The hands are what's up, okay? Overall lifestyle question. When did you start living a healthy lifestyle and how long did it take 
to see results. Okay, this is a, such a general question, but I'm gonna try my best. I definitely started with a little bit of a cheat code. My mother is extremely health conscious. I would just say aware of the realistic difference between whole foods and processed foods, which is so important. This is like, honestly, the definition of a healthy lifestyle. And people think it's like, oh, you're getting all these supplements and like so much protein and so little carbs and sugar, and it's not. Okay, I wanna pause because this ties into love to know more about your diet. Okay, these are the same question. I'm gonna tell you both at the same time. Oh, whoever asked me that question and this question, this answer is combined. My diet, yeah, started super young, extremely health conscious. My mom is, bases her diet and lifestyle around just whole foods, uh, organics, things that are less processed, less chemicals, less additives, less, less preservatives. It just so happens that we're just typically eating processed food, typically consuming like an insane amount of sugar. Like I said, eating sugar, like I eat so much fruit, love pasta, I love carbs. All this like white carbs are just straight sugar. But if I'm not eating a ton of overly processed food, I like to think that I'm avoiding enough sugar to keep it down to a more moderate intake. Have you ever looked at the sugar content of ketchup? Like this is insanity, ketchup super processed food or sauce or condiment or whatever. Yeah, I think eating enough of each thing, just like honestly balanced caloric intake is probably 1800 calories a day. And if I stick to my diet, I'm eating 2000 to 2200 calories a day. I love milk. Honestly, milk, eggs, I don't love eggs, but I put eggs in my protein pancake mix that I eat every day. That's a super balanced meal. So even if I'm eating random stuff throughout the rest of the day, I know that that was like one good balanced meal. I have it after I work out. So that's a good intake of protein. I drink a ton of milk outside of like eating. With every meal, I drink milk. I'm telling, okay, okay, okay. Hear me out for a second. Milk is honestly, in my opinion, the secret ingredient. I think milk is such a whole source of protein, especially that the ultra filtered milk that I drink is reduced sugar and increased protein. And for that reason, that's honestly the most nutrient dense thing that I'm eating every day. Outside of the eggs that I eat in my protein. Eggs are also magic. If you look at the nutrient content in an egg, there is no other food that you can eat that has that much range of nutrients within one food. It's wild. But yeah, my diet just consists of what I like to eat. I really like salad because I love vinegar and citrus, so I'll make salad often with rice vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and lime juice. That's like my favorite ultimate go-to. I add cheese, add some protein, air fryer recipes with the chicken. I love red meat also, so I eat a lot of steak. Like once a week, I a lot, I mean, once a week. Okay, oh, how long did it take you to see results from your healthy life? So that's another thing I like. I mean, I guess realistically, I've been eating healthy for my whole life. I still eat junk food, obviously, all the time. Like I love McDonald's. <laughs> to just be conscious and aware of things that you're intaking every day and what they are actually doing for you. Like I think people who eat a ton of processed food every day and they're not aware that it's like overly processed, that's probably where it becomes reasons why you're not seeing results. And I think seeing results from healthy food comes every day. Like I said in a previous video, when I just drink enough water in the day, like my skin is drastically different the next day. If I eat McDonald's the next morning at the gym, zero energy. And it's not like I'm eating less calories and I'm still getting carbs, which is energy, but it's like not, it's not processing in your body the way that it needs to, to provide energy for you. And so I think, I just feel it the next day. Like I just, that's how fast you can see results with food. A diet affects your mind, clarity, your emotions, the way that you feel, the way that you react to things in the world, the amount of energy that you have, the amount of focus that you have in the day, things getting tasks done throughout the day, interacting with other people. Okay, this is real. We're really going on a tangent today. This video is gonna be so long. This is real life. If I am eating terribly and I feel like gross and lethargic, I'm not funny. <laughs> Can't like interact with other people the same way. Like I just don't even have like wit. Like it's almost like I can't record call responses or like words fast enough out of my brain. Very crazy to say, but your diet runs your life. That's, that's some, some real tea, okay? Moral of the story, milk makes you funny, okay? Drink milk. On that note, someone asked me what my go-to takeout order is in Kelowna, which is a good question also, because I think everyone eats out more than they think anyone else does. Yeah, with friends, obviously, but like you're in a rush, you're alone. I mean, you eat out, it is what it is, okay? Not against the law. 
Mucho burrito, shrimp bowl, my go-to all like by far over anything else. Fully loaded, two sauces. I get sour cream and burrito sauce. Burrito sauce is full of sugar and calories. And it's delicious. It's amazing. It warms my heart. It's honestly my comfort food. I love mucho burrito. Yum. Tips on getting enough protein. I hate to say it again. No, I'm serious. I take a protein supplement from Olmax Quick Mass because I'm always trying to gain like just overall general mass. And so I like this one because it's a very clean source of carbs. 64, can okay, I don't take four scoops? This is like recommended to take four scoops, to like gain mass. So per two scoops is 34 grams of protein, 32 grams of protein. It's like a clean carb complex. Absorbs that Okay, such as sweet potato, rolled oats, quinoa, along with a natural prebiotic. Okay, not what I would recommend if you're, you're not looking to gain mass. Alani Nutrition has one of the best tasting isolates I've ever tried. It's amazing and it has digestive enzymes right in there in the blend. And so I feel like it's a little bit easier on your tummy. Also the pre-workout and pump I use are the same brand. Alani knows what's up. Got it in the bag. So I think that's all the gym questions that we have. Should we go into the other stuff? Favorite restaurant in Kelowna? This is a fun question. Okay, I have two different answers. I know that the person who asked me this lived in Canada. So I can't answer with Cactus Club, but if you're not from Canada and you've never been to Cactus Club, it's this amazing restaurant. There's this beautiful location in Kelowna, right at the Yacht Club, downtown on the lake. And Cactus Club is one of those restaurants. If you ask anyone from Canada, they know. Just like, just hits the spot every time. And the servers and the people who work there are such a good time and it's always fun. Vibes are high and the music's good and the lighting's excellent. And like the height of like chair to table ratio immaculate i don't even know how they do it okay cactus club knows what's up however for people in canada who would literally rip me apart for that answer <laughs> everyone's been the cactus club best restaurant in Kelowna. realistic review of just the food i mean obviously the service is good too but broads this small restaurant downtown probably some of the best food i've ever had in Kelowna. i think that they're probably pretty high if you like looked up like best food or best reviews in Kelowna too but they're just like more unique dishes it's a little bit more high-end so like the food quality is really high and yeah lots of fun if you've never been to rods i would definitely recommend it at least one but as for like summertime vibe i think is huge in Kelowna. so like overall experience wise if i've already been to cactus club outside of that there's this small restaurant called central downtown and it's attached to this like arena thing but it's so cute and they just updated it over covid and had built this like big outdoor patio and in the summer they have like picnic tables and fake grass and it's delicious. Probably my favorite meal that I've ever had in Kelowna is this tuna burger. I don't even know if they still have the tuna burger. I'm so sorry if you come to Kelowna and you go to Central and you try to get the tuna burger and it's not there. They had this tuna, like a seared tuna burger and, a, and, and then this mushroom gravy. Dip the tuna burger in this mushroom gravy currently salivating talking about the sandwich and i i've had a lot of food in Kelowna, and, and i've probably ate at every restaurant also a hidden gem side note the best barbecue that i've had ever i've never been just the central southern states where there's probably real barbecue but the best barbecue i've ever had is in Kelowna. it's at the hatching post on boucherie road in west Kelowna, and it looks like the weirdest it doesn't even look like a restaurant it looks like a shed it's like this big barn shaped thing in between the wineries on Mount Boucherie on Boucherie Road and it's like all like reclaimed wood and you like pull up in this gravel parking lot in the back and they have this menu of like slow cooked brisket and real cornbread and like if you don't like barbecue and you don't eat meat just don't go here but if you like meat and barbecue same five star review vibes are high service is immaculate you sit outside in this little picnic table and the music is bomb chow down on this literal aluminum gray on this like picnic table of a pile of meat and it's excellent excellent would highly recommend save the best for last i really like this question because it makes me think that a lot of my viewers and followers are new and so that's super exciting and i feel like i've been like waiting for this like announcement <laughs> like waiting for the right time you know just slip it in there but i had so many questions about what i do for work i'm so excited to tell you that i'm building a swimwear brand 
And so called Navi Swim. You should probably look it up. Navyswim.com. This has been a long time coming. I've been, it's been such a roller coaster trying to build this company. And I've had so many doubts and hold up. And I mean, I'm just figuring it all out because I was, I mean, I've been doing it just by myself. Like I have not, I've never delegated any tasks. And I was manufacturing overseas for a long time. So there was a huge language barrier there as well as just time constraints and issues, shipping, import, literal shipping container barges just not arriving. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And every time I do something new, that's when I'm learning how to do it. Like I'm every day I do something I've literally never done before, which is crazy. I love it. I'm so happy Yay! that I followed through with everything that I did. So many times I'm just like, do I invest my entire life savings into this? Do I just walk away? And yeah, probably the biggest risk I've ever taken in my life with my own financial investments, as well as other people's investors, which is huge. Like that's a huge responsibility, just like a different level of accountability no like it's not just me anymore riding on this to kind of succeed and at this point i'm just in the mindset where there is no other option and i just have to push through until i figure it out and it's slowly but surely coming together releasing a new collection this spring don't tell anyone every single piece is custom and i design all of them so it's a long process from start to finish like it's crazy how it's crazy seeing literal sketches transform into real products but it's terrifying at the same time um, um, if you haven't seen our season two collection launched kind of midwinter last year, which is another huge learning curve, is trying to sell a seasonal product in Canada. <laughs> the way to market a seasonal product in Canada is pretty much only on the anticipation for the season. And so going through that has been a lot of learning, but we're getting there. We're getting into the groove. We're getting into a rhythm. Also something I feel like I would have potentially overlooked if I could go back is the sustainability aspect. I do think it's important for clothing to be a renewable resource, which is super interesting. Seeing the way that you could regenerate synthetic fibers into new new product, crazy. Like you can take old carpet, you can take fishing nets out of the ocean, pretty much what Navi Swim is based on. You can take old clothing and regenerate synthetic nylon to new material, which is outrageous if you think about it. But it's also such a task to take on. Swimwear is such a quickly consumed, fast rotating product. And I don't think anybody just wants one swimsuit. Like it's one thing if it's maybe like a regenerated pair of denim that you're gonna wear all the time with other stuff, but like a bathing suit, I think people want multiple bikinis type of market. And so that's been a huge learning curve. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a try on haul Yay! or you wanna see how they fit or you wanna know more about the product. I would love to, I could actually talk about Navi all day. I mean, that's what I do all day. Like I literally, I do talk about Navi all day just to myself when I'm alone. But yeah, leading on to the last question of the video, what inspired you to create Navi Swim? So obviously this question came from somebody who's been following me for a while and probably seen more progress as Navi has evolved. So the real inspiration behind Navi Swim, honestly, I live in a swimsuit. Like Kelowna over the winter is sweatpants and hoodies, more like just cold and people want to be comfortable. But in the summertime, I start my day by putting on a bikini. Like we are on the boat all day, by the lake all day, downtown Kelowna. Kelowna is built around a lake, like the Okanagan. Here's a picture in case you don't know, is this beautiful valley around this massive lake called Lake Okanagan. And it's so beautiful and we get the most stunning summer season. And it's, I mean, everyone who lives here is by the lake. It's amazing. Anyways, Kelowna doesn't really have a ton of modernized swim retail options as of right now. So creating Navi literally was just based on me wanting to have bikinis that I liked that fit well. I would call it a surf style because we surf on Okanagan Lake all the time. Very very important that it's not just it's not just a fashion statement it's more like still fits properly keeps you all snugged up not a ton of padding or seams or clips it's just very simple dials that are still flattering and just you know stay in place while you're swimming in the lake so there was none of that here so I, i'm ordering swimsuits online like every two weeks i'm ordering a new bikini in like australia or california 
or Bali or something and it's like these companies just there was always like one thing that I was like oh I wish I could just change this like one design like this one flaw that would just make the bikini like 10 times better or more comfortable or stay in place or higher quality or something that it was just lacking so honestly Navi Swim just came from me being frustrated <laughs> not being able to find like the perfect bikini so then came Navi Swim was born and not to be biased they are the best bikinis ever they fit flawlessly the product honestly at this point is only evolving because i want just more options more styles more colors but the fit itself is actually unbeatable and I, I get so much positive feedback from customers saying that they've never been so comfortable in a swimsuit, which is just honestly feels unreal. Like it feels like not a real thing. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the people that have supported it thus far. The product is there, it's dialed in. So I'm so excited to see where it goes. I really think Navi Swim could be, provide a lot of value in not only the product itself, but like to create like a little Navi empire and have all of the like-minded people around me being able to work on the same thing would be super cool. That's honestly number one goal with Navi is be able to work with other people and just continue to evolve as a brand and a product into the most positive influence that it could be. Okay, so that's the end. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. If you made it through this whole video, I don't even know how long this video is gonna be, but I'll probably cut out a lot of stuff. <laughs> I talked for a long time, you guys. That was like two hours, but thanks for watching. Let me know if you want me to dive into Navi more or if any of you are actually curious about the fit and function of the suits. I would love to do like a try on like sizing guide of all the styles and designs as well as like get more feedback on the product. So there's a special discount code for you in the description Yay! if you wanna shop Navi. Drop from last year is beautiful. The bright colors are stunning. Looks so good with a tan. And again, not to be uh, biased, but top quality. The neon colors don't fade. They do well in chlorine. It doesn't overly stretch out. Would recommend. This was so fun. Honestly, I might do another video based on like a question poll. Maybe be a little bit more specific because there was so many questions that I felt like I couldn't get to because there was so much. But I love you all. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Kelsey Ray. Same as my YouTube. Same as my channel name. And um, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you didn't like this video, please subscribe. And you'll like the next one, I promise. Okay, love you. Bye.